This is Thank You Mama Weekly Lessons for Mothers All Around the World. Hello and welcome to Thank You Mama. My name is Anna Tider. My guest today is Arlene Costellat. And I am, I know I always am so excited about my guests, <laughs> but I'm really excited about Arlene today because Arlene heard me speak uh, at the Simple Families, I think, podcast, and since then started listening to Thank You, Mama. And it took her quite a while to gather her courage and write to me and say, you know, I love the show and I'd love to be a guest. And I am so excited about this. And I wanted to talk to you a little later about how can we invite you ladies <laughs> to get in touch with me and come and be a guest on my podcast. I'm so open to this. And in my dream, as I just said to Arlene, listeners are my guests, you know, in my dream, all of you come and join me on the podcast and share your stories and your mom's stories and lessons. That would be beautiful. So Arlene is currently in the Pacific Northwest, where I just moved from in the USA. She's originally originally from the Philippines. Arlene is a stay-at-home mom of two. She's a former healthcare worker. She's an aspiring writer, and she's sounds like dreaming of writing a memoir one day. She's also a sexual assault victim by a member of her own family at a very young age. Um, as she said, also a former nomad before meeting her half Vietnamese and half Croatian husband. And she's also a marathon runner. Hi, Arlene, and welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm so happy you're here. <laughs> Arlene, <laughs> help me help me to invite the ladies to contact me. <laughs> How did you find me? I forgot I forgot where did you write to me through Instagram, through Instagram. I think. Instagram. Yes, yes, that's right. <laughs> but I always I always put my contact email in the episode notes, so it's very easy to get in touch with me, but I'm also everywhere. I'm on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn, <laughs> everywhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Arlene, thank you for contacting me and thank you for listening and thank you for wanting to share your mom and her story. Yeah, I'm, I'm so honored to be here. Your podcast is really empowering and it really inspired me. So yeah, it took me a while, like I said, to message you. It's been like, I keep wrestling it, like the idea of writing you, reaching out to be on your show. Because, I mean, I really wanted to to tell my story and my mom's story, especially. Yeah. I'm very happy you did because we have a story. <laughs> 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 we have quite an incredible story. Do you want to tell me a little bit about yourself before we jump into talking about mom? Is there anything you'd like to add or tell me about yourself? Yeah, like I said, um, I'm a stay-at-home mom since my firstborn was, you know, since I had him, I'd been home with him. I you know, me and my husband, we kind of like came up with that agreement. <laughs> it would be nice if one of us is always available for our child or because we wanted to have two. So we wanted one of us to be home in case something happened, like we we like the comfort of it, you know, mm -hmm. knowing mm -hmm. that someone is there for them. And like I said, growing up, my mother wasn't there for me all the time. And I really wanted to be with my children, mm. be present for them. So I think that's one of the reasons I have to like give up something for myself and be home for mm. my children and take care of them. How old are they now? So my older is nine and my youngest one, my daughter, she's six. Mm -hmm. So they are both in school now. So, so it's nice. I mean, I get to, to do something for myself now that they're both in school. So apropos doing something else with your time, tell me a little bit about the writing. <laughs> are you, did you start? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I have notes everywhere. Like mm -hmm. I, I would have pieces of my childhood, mm -hmm. like about motherhood. I just, I just have to put them together. I always love reading a memoir mm -hmm. and there are to me reading a memoir 
it's it's very powerful. We we learn so much about yes. you know their yeah. life, yeah. And I always get inspired by it. And mm-hmm. I I've been writing or I keep a journal since I was thirteen, mm-hmm. and and that's my way of letting out all my emotions, whether they're good or bad, mm-hmm. and that's my outlet. Mm-hmm. like my best friend. <laughs> mm. So I always love writing. And in fact, my son wants to be a writer, he said, mm-hmm. when he grows up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll see. But I would love to someday <laughs> to have my own memoir to... Actually, I wanted to start that because there are so many young generation in my hometown that that maybe if they read something a story from their own, you know, that came from Philippines, maybe they'll be hmm. ambitious to, like, mm-hmm. to get out because mm-hmm. the life there was was just hard. It's the reason why I got out of my country, mm-hmm. you know. So, so yeah. I want to talk more about writing with you, but maybe we'll take it off, off, off the podcast. But how did you leave the Philippines and when? So I left Philippines when I was 21. I met a guy. Mm. Um, he was my pen pal <laughs> for for a few years. We would write back and forth, like we would just talk. And this is like there was internet, but we would prefer writing. <laughs> or sometimes he would call me. So he met me in Philippines. He went to see me in Philippines, and he t- he liked me. And he said, "You want to marry me? I'll bring you to United States." And at that time, my life was really hard. Like mm. I was just everywhere. I was, I don't have my family. I mean, they're not there. I was just 16 years old. I got, I left my town at 16 and I'm just everywhere from there. Try to survive, you know? And Mm -hmm. so, uh, yeah, that guy brought me to United States, but it didn't work out. Uh, he was emotionally abusive to me. Um, Mm. so yeah, he would like move from state to state and leave me. And, you know, I just came from Philippines and he would leave me by mm. myself. And I, I don't know how to drive yet. I'm just still, you know, learning how to live somewhere. And it was a big move for me, you know, from Philippines to U.S. But but actually, you know, it, it worked out in the end. Like, I'm glad I left him just because I don't see any future with him. So, yeah, so that's how it happened. <laughs> Oh, amazing. It must have been very courageous of you. you. It must have been quite hard to leave him because I can imagine you were dependent on him being in the United States. I was already working then, you know. We were in Hawaii. We lived there a total of two years, almost three years. Mm-hmm. I worked so much. I would work 16 hours a day, maybe one day off mm-hmm. in a week. And then he will take half of my paycheck. Oh, no. <laughs> So that was what did like, you do? Did you work in housekeeping? I work in a hotel, one of the five star hotel in Hawaii, mm-hmm. and I also work at the hospital. So at nighttime, oh. I'd work at the hospital, and daytime, I'd work at the hotel because oh. I needed I yeah. needed to make enough because I am mm-hmm. helping my family also in Philippines. Of course, I'm I'm putting my sister in school. I'm helping my parents. And half of my paycheck goes to my ex. And there's nothing left for me. <laughs> so I'm so glad and he you was left emotionally him. abusive. Yes. I mean, a lot of people were happy when, when I decided to like, there's no future. And he's, like I said, he's very emotionally abusive to me. And he would threaten me to send me back to Philippines. Mm. He would do all these abusive words mm-hmm. to scare me. Mm. So, yeah. So I left. I'm glad. Mm. And now you have your Vietnamese Croatian husband. What yes. an amazing mix. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. So I moved back here to to Washington and I met my husband and and right away I fell in love with him and and he's just he's just this nicest guy who treats me very, you know. I'm so glad you found him. Thank you. Should we talk yes. about mom? Should we talk about Mama Felina? Yes, yeah, so um, my mother, so she's still in Philippines. She's never been anywhere else. She had a very hard life. She got married at 13 
forced her into marriage, really. It wasn't her choice. So 13, I mean, it was so young. And so she young. had her firstborn at 14. Oh, my God. It was an arranged marriage. My grandma, mm. you know, they're, they're um, like the natives in Philippines, mm-hmm. no education. And to them, women are not supposed to go to school. They're, mm. they're supposed to just stay home do domestic tasks and just get pregnant and and that's it Mm. and you told me you told me it was quite normal at that time to get married at that young an age in an arranged marriage yes it's it's normal at that time it's it's changing now because Mm -hmm. children are more you know protected Mm -hmm. but back then they they don't have a choice Mm. And I think my grandma was the same too. So she was just doing what she knew, Mm -hmm. what her ancestors were being taught to them. Mm. So, so that's, that's how my mother, she was, she was, she didn't complain. It seems like she was well, Um, she was okay with it. Um, Good thing. My father was good looking boy, I think. (laughs) (laughs) And he is very nice to her. He's a handyman, you know, mm-hmm. very, because mm-hmm. I think back then, like, if you're strong and you're good with your hands, you are good, you mm. know, to marry someone. Mm-hmm. The first 10 years of their marriage, they were, they were fine. I remember there was not much of a, a fighting or anything. Mm-hmm. And we live in a farm back then. So I don't remember really much of like arguments and that kind of thing, um, other than they just work in the farm. Um, my mother helps in the farm. We would help to their children. Uh, we'll help plant rice and corn, harvest, do, do all these things. And we were in the farm. We were not exposed to anything. We didn't have electricity back then, you know. Mm. So that's all the life we know back then. It was, it was very simple. Yeah, but you, yes. did, you said all the children went to school. Yes, we all went to school. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the good thing. I'm glad that my parents, they did not repeat what my grandma did. Exactly. You know, my grandma yeah. was a tough old lady. Uh, mm-hmm. She was tough on them. Mm-hmm. She was a widow herself, you know, mm-hmm. two times and raised her own kids. So I, I see her. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I see her reason why, I think. How many children did your grandma have? Because she was married twice. Mm-hmm. So on her own, I think she has seven. Mm-hmm. And then on the ex, on the other one, she has like maybe like six stepkids mm-hmm. so it was, it was a big family I remember it was always it's a big family mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. but she's very tough uh, I remember her she's just this tough mm-hmm. little tough old lady <laughs> <laughs> I guess they had to be I mean you just had to yes. be to survive mm-hmm. so what happened at one point you moved away from the farm yeah, we moved from, from our farm. I think I was 10. I remember 10. Um, I don't know the reason why we left our farm. My mother, they just do. You know, they didn't ask us, mm. the children. We just moved. I don't know, maybe because our house there, we get flooded a lot. Mm-hmm. We live next to a river. And, and it, when it rains a lot, then, then, you know, we will get flooded. And I remember there are a lot of times that my grandma would wake up in the middle of the night and he'll and she'll just like pick us up and take us somewhere safe Mm -hmm. because she lived with us at that time. My Mm -hmm. grandma lives Mm -hmm. with us. My my mom's siblings, sisters live with us. There's there's a lot. So, yeah. So I think that's one of the reasons we get flooded a lot in our house. And I think to be closer to the school, I think that's that that could be the reason. So it was, it was a little different. When we moved to town, my father started working as a carpenter. He was always good with his hands. He built our house, you know. Yeah, he started working and making friends and get into drinking habit. And he became alcoholic from there. And so my mother, she was a stay-at-home mom <clears throat> up until we were 10. And yeah, my father was just, and he was abusive. And she already had, she already had five children at that time. 
four at that time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then she was about to get pregnant with my mm-hmm. youngest brother. Mm-hmm. So and so she started working when my my father became irresponsible, I'd say. He's, he stopped working in the farm. I don't know why. And he just focused on carpenting, you know, working as a as a carpenter. But he's not bringing any money home. He just he just make money and buy alcohol and he'll just get drunk. It's like an everyday thing. We were struggling from there. So, you know, there's no food. <laughs> so yeah. she started working as a housekeeper in, in a resort. So she would just do all kinds of odd jobs. And she'll bring home scraps of food for us. Mm. So yeah, mm. it was it was hard for her. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yes. What what happened then? You know, we were struggling then when we left the farm. Our life was changing. So I live with my uncle. I was like already like twelve or thirteen. I live there to help around the house. Mm-hmm. And so they can help me with my school for my tuition. And so I lived there, but they treated me like, you know, like a maid. They weren't mm-hmm. very nice to me. And I have a cousin who's already in university and he'll come home on weekends. And, you know, I was, I w- as a kid, I was always so tired. We do really manual chores. Like we would fetch water from miles and carry it home because there's no water supply inside the house so we have to fetch it somewhere Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. (laughs) and then uh, do all kinds of like housework stuff so I'm always tired between school and the house Mm -hmm. the manual house house chores so I'm always so tired so I would just sleep so deep (laughs) and then I'd wake up and my cousin would be there like I would feel him touching me you know like and I would like I, I'm so confused. Like, mm. he would just do that. Like, mm. he would do that every time he comes home. Mm. And then, but at one point, I think, after a while, when he he tried to go further, then that's when I, I freaked out and I kicked him and I ran outside and screamed. Mm-hmm. Oh, and okay. So, <laughs> and so that, it stopped there, good thing. And so my uncle just punch him <laughs> oh great so your uncle protected you from his own son yes that's great that's that's um, yeah. oh no not not it's my different uncle oh it's a different it's my uncle. Mom, okay yeah it's my mom's only brother that protected mm-hmm. me but my mm-hmm. uncle my aunt mm-hmm. they told me not to say anything it's a shame to say something mm-hmm. so they they told me do not say anything my mother also said let's just keep it to ourselves Mm-hmm. Let's just keep it. So I, I, I kept it to myself. Mm-hmm. You know, we were scared too because we were living in my uncle's land. My uncle said, if we will say something, then we will be kicked out. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. so we just kept it. Like, we'll just forget about this, not to talk okay. about it. But they did stop it. So they did protect you and it stopped. It stopped. Yeah. It didn't go further. I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Oh God! Yeah. Uh, let's mm-hmm. go. Let's go back to my mom, mom's life. When did she divorce your dad? So um, we were in high school. I, I think we were in our teens then. I was. I don't remember. I was fourteen or fifteen. And they're having a lot of like. There's already you know physical abuse involved. My my father is very jealous because my mother then would stay at her work. She just lived there. And she's not coming home anymore. And so my father suspected her that she was cheating. But but my mother said she needed to work extra day and night. That way we have extra. Mm-hmm. So my father, he always attempt to, to hurt her physically. Mm-hmm. And then one time he showed up at her work with his machete mm-hmm. and tried to slice her. <laughs> Oh, she God. almost got killed. And and that really scared my mother. Mm-hmm. And so from there, there's no divorce in Philippines. There's mm-hmm. annulment. And we were very poor, you know. Mm-hmm. We couldn't afford it. So they just they just decided traditionally to just, you know. And, and I think the children was the one who decided back then. I remember my, my oldest brother was the one who decided no more. Then you, you guys are okay not to live together anymore. Mm-hmm. Then let's mm-hmm. just... 
But my brother was a very angry kid, you know. Mm-hmm. He he has a lot of a lot of things to deal with himself, with the family mm-hmm. and the hardships and so my mother was I remember her begging for us to like please do not send me back to your father because I'm gonna mm. get killed. Oh god. Yeah, so uh I remember too that I said, Yeah, I, I do not want you to go back to him because he all he do is drink. We were so lost, you know, the children were so lost. But yeah, they they got separated. Good thing my father just accepted that and he found himself a new wife. But my mother stayed stayed single and mm-hmm. she just kept working, working to support us mm-hmm. in any mm-hmm. way she could. We were struggling so much, you know, financially. And, and I really wanted to go to school. I really wanted to get a, a good education because I did not want to stay like her, or I don't want to be poor. <laughs> yeah, I got a scholarship, but I would still do laundry for my professor. I would just go to my professor and ask them if 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 they need help, like mm-hmm. if they need someone to clean their house or do their laundry. That's what mm-hmm. I do on weekends. I do laundry for my roommates or board mates. I, I would just do all kinds of job to um, extra extra income because I just try to survive, you know, do anything. Yeah. What did you study? That university I, I was in, I was trying to study accounting, mm-hmm. but it didn't work out. I only went there for two years. Mm-hmm. And after that, I switched to another university and I studied nursing. Great. So you graduated with a nursing degree. You're a nurse. I don't have my RN license mm-hmm. just because I had to stop when I got to Hawaii. The okay. re- one of the reasons I came to U.S., like I could pursue my study and get my RN license Mm -hmm. while working Mm -hmm. but it didn't happen I kept working 16 hours a day because I needed to help my family and then I met my husband started a family Mm -hmm. and decided from there that I'll pursue different Mm -hmm. different career Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. (laughs) let's go back to mama so so now she's divorced and still working hard but this is this is not, unfortunately, the end of her hardships. You you told mm-hmm. me or you wrote to me about your brother's illnesses. Yes. So 2020, my oldest brother died of cancer. Mm. And it was, it was very, it was so sudden. Mm. Um, How old was he? We didn't he? see it coming. He was, he just turned 40. Oh my God, he was young. Yeah, he was very young. He, uh... He has four children, mm. young, you know, young mm-hmm. children. Like mm-hmm. the oldest is 13 now and the youngest is only four. Mm. He was going to go through chemo. And I remember him writing me asking for my help financially. Mm. Mm. I did help him, but, you know, it was too late. It was mm. too late. It was already spreading. And it took him, it was only two months and he he, he just, mm. he couldn't, he couldn't, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I couldn't bottle it. Was she there? Was she with him? Yes. So mm-hmm. my my mother is. So my brothers live with her. I built them a house big enough for everybody to live there, and I think it's 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 a it's very typical for Filipinos to still live with their parents. My mother was taking care of her of his children, really like another mother to mm-hmm. their mm-hmm. <laughs> children. Mm-hmm. Um, so she was taking care of him up until. You know, until he died. Yeah. And same yeah. with my youngest brother, who's been ill for a long time. Mm-hmm. And my mother was taking care of him. And yeah, so my oldest brother died 2020. And my youngest brother died 2021, just a day before his 29th birthday. Mm. So there was a lot of heartaches. I'm very sorry for your loss, but I'm also very sorry for your mm. mom because it must be the worst thing to happen to a human yes. being to lose a child. Mm-hmm. How is she coping? Is she still working or is she helping the family now? She's not working anymore because she's taking care of my brother's children. She do gardening mm-hmm. and that seems to be the only <laughs> Thing that she enjoys doing mm-hmm. she'll do gardening mm-hmm. and um just happy to to be with her grandkids and then on top of that she lost her mom just recently yes so she lost her mom a few months ago 
with my grandma, she, it, it's it's painful. It it still you know it still mm-hmm. hurts. But she lived her life. I mean, she's mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. Yeah. probably in her nineties mm-hmm. when she mm-hmm. died. Mm-hmm. Arlene, let's learn. <laughs> <laughs> this is a harsh, yeah. harsh, harsh life, and I'm very grateful you told us about how people in 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 the Philippines live. Um, it's 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 really very eye opening mm-hmm. for how many things yeah. still need to change around the world. What do you feel you've learned from her? You told me you didn't have a close relationship with her. And that absolutely makes sense when one has to work so hard and struggle and try to survive and be so tough just to survive and go through all these hardships. It's not a lovey-dovey like it is here in the West Mm -hmm. with your kids most (laughs) of the times. Yes, (laughs) It's just a different culture and different, totally different surroundings and a different, different life. But you still learn yes. from her. So tell me, yes. tell me about that. I definitely learned to be resilient from my mother. Learn how to endure pain. She been through so much. Like I said, at such very young age, no childhood, no youth. Mm. You know, she's being thrown into this massive responsibilities. So she's very resilient to pain and to overcome those, you know, hardships in life. And keep going. So that's that's definitely because I have that. I'm stronger. You know, mm-hmm. I'm stronger, I think. She's very also res- resourceful. And, you know, when you're poor, you have to be resourceful. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so mm-hmm. she's very good with her hands. She would stitch traditional clothes for women and mm-hmm. sell them. Mm-hmm. Make bracelets, um, neck- necklaces. And I remember we, we'd help her do all those things because we needed to make money, you know. Mm-hmm. I remember being so involved to this because I'm I'm the oldest. I'm in the I'm the middle child, but I'm like the oldest for a girl. And so I feel like I've been given so much responsibility, you know. Like you know, you'd see children playing there, but I was always doing something. I have to always help do responsible things i'd say mm. do you do you do you play now do you get to play now <laughs> <laughs> i do oh, good <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's the good thing yeah. um yeah. i'm very grateful for that mm. that i get to to do what i enjoy now mm-hmm. you know like i like i said i i like to write so here you know when i drop off my children at school and i'll come home and write whatever comes Mm-hmm. mine and and I run so that seems mm-hmm. to be my mm-hmm. my other hobby I'd say mm-hmm. <laughs> no. mm-hmm. let's let's go back to lessons I'm sure we have more <laughs> yeah so also my mother she's very she's very devoted to her children I'd say you know because no matter what happened although she's not there to be with us, to like you said, like you know, to be to play with us, that kind mm-hmm, of thing. Mm-hmm. But she needed to work. But she's always there. She's always. I remember her s- telling us that you need to have a better life. That way, you don't get to experience what I experience. You mm-hmm, know. Mm-hmm. So, so she pushed you to get a better life than hers was. Mm-hmm, yes. Mm-hmm. So she's very. Her self sacrifices, I'd say, you know, and she's when her and my father got separated or divorced, she was just she just focused on working like she just she have all her children with her except me because I'm all over the place already. So, yeah, her self sacrifices, she was it was and very devoted to her children and mm-hmm. her church. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Do you think yes. that? church or faith is something she she taught you or um i don't know um i'm i am not as religious as okay. her mm-hmm. okay she mm-hmm. she goes yeah. to church um every sunday mm-hmm. you know i i chose a different path now okay. mm-hmm. yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> But she's devoted to her to her yeah. religion mm-hmm. as being a Catholic, mm-hmm. and and as a child, she used to work with 
she used to stay work at that convent. Mm-hmm. So, so I think I I'm not sure if it's like uh, like she needed to stay because they help her when mm-hmm. she was mm-hmm. a child. She respects my mm-hmm. my faith mm-hmm. or my mm-hmm. where I'm at right now. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. she doesn't tell me like you should go to church. Yeah, so yeah. she doesn't nag yeah. me about yeah. that. So mm-hmm. that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. What do you wish she taught you? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I wish she taught me how not to care about what people think. Really, you know, she care a lot about what people think, what people say about her. She would listen to people's gossip, and she just she care about those things so much. She cares about just every little thing, even how you dress. You know, that kind of like. <laughs> I have it in me mm. <laughs> at times. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, because I would care what people think. I'd care what people think of me as a stay-at-home mom. Mm-hmm. I care if they even see me as valuable, you know. Mm-hmm. That is kind of hard for us, you know, women. It is. So, caring of what people think. Mm. And we are so being judged on all different levels. If you go and work and build a career, you know, you are being looked down and because you're not taking care of your kids. If you stay at home, you're, you know, not living your full potential. If you're so it's yes. it's we're always we're too skinny, too chubby, too I don't know what. It's it's <laughs> it's hard. <laughs> Anything else? Yes. I wish she's more content, I'd say, you know. I wish she's more content with with what life or like I always look go back to when we used to live in a farm. She should be content back then. Maybe her life, maybe her and my father would stay together if if we didn't move. Because mm-hmm. I feel like maybe she, she was the reason why we left the farm mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. she was bored. Because mm-hmm. I remember her being bored mm-hmm. at one point. Mm-hmm. <laughs> She, maybe she needed more mm-hmm. and I have that with me I get bored at times mm-hmm. <laughs> I wish she was more content I, I'd say mm-hmm. that's a hard one <laughs> <laughs> yeah I know right? mm-hmm. shouldn't we all be more content I know it, it, it's a hard thing to learn mm. and I also wish I wish she made more friends like she doesn't have any friends I wish she was more friendly but it sounded like if she just worked so much and had so many children to take care of and everything would she even have time for friends yeah that's probably the reason Mm. too i mean she's always working i remember her just like just the laundry itself like from Mm. the resort where she used to work like Mm -hmm. she would like she would not even finish even it's like it's already dark and i still Mm. see her you know doing laundry She had a very hard life, so... Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you'd like to share? Yeah, like like I said, I don't have a very close relationship with my mother. I can go for years without talking Mm. to her, really. Like, we were not like this mother-daughter who would just, like, talk. Mm -hmm. We Mm. we don't talk. Mm -hmm. And if, if we do talk, she she likes to complain and the hard thing right now for me when I talk to her she talks about her sadness mm, and of course yeah. I know she needed someone to talk to mm-hmm. but she talks a lot about that and I feel like I can't handle it you know we just don't have that relationship mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. we're not close mm-hmm. Aline should we wrap up should we recap what we learned yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'm just so full of impressions and you really I feel like you took me and dived me into a completely different world and I'm grateful to you for that. You really opened my eyes to so many things. We Thank we you. really take we really take it for granted, you know. We live in this nice privileged lives and and take it for granted and it's so important to Remember and think of people who don't. And thank you for doing that. And we learned from your mama about 
Absolutely about resilience and being strong. And I love how you said that we're stronger than we think. Mm -hmm. About being resource resourceful and creative. About always tending to your children and being totally devoted to your children. You mentioned self-sacrifice, but the ladies here in the West... It's interesting how often they they say, "I wish I learned not to be too, to not to do too much self sacrifice for my children and my family." To sometimes <laughs> take some me time and take a break, and you know, it's interesting how different surroundings and lives and circumstances teach you different things. Um, and then, as something you wish she had taught you is how to not care about what people think. This is such a big one. To be more content and, I, I guess, happy with what we have. And you mentioned you wish she had more friends. It seems to that she's lonely. Mm -hmm. Is there anything I missed? It's it's one of the big things for me, because like, I always look back to that life. When we used to live in a farm, I see so much contentment and, and the, sim the simplicity of it, you know. And it's one thing that I want to show my children that I want a simple, simple life. And yeah, we, we try to live very simple, you know. We, have, we still tend our wants, but we mostly focus on our needs and be intentional and mindful with everything. I just I just admire women also who portray simplicity and and strength. That's what I look into. You know, as I love the the simple life, but with elegance, I would say I, I love. <laughs> yeah, you can be simple but live in an elegant way too. So, so yeah, just 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 that. Mm -hmm. Aline, thank you again for getting in touch with me. I am so happy you did and so grateful. And I really, really think that my listeners will be inspired with this story as much as I was. Thank you so much. It, yeah, thank you for being my guest again. Thank you so much, Anna. If you enjoy Thank You Mama and want to help it grow, Please take the two seconds to leave a five-star review on Apple Podcasts. It really helps. If you'd like to get in touch, you can send me a mail at info at thankyoumama.net. You can also find me on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter under Anna Tider. that's T-A-J-D-E-R. This was Thank You Mama. Come back next week, subscribe and tell your friends. Bye.